And so we find ourselves at the end of yet another screaming rotation around the Earth's sun. With only days left in 2023, I figured it was time for me to do something that I've been wanting to do since the first time I resolved to start making content for YouTube five long years ago. RIP OFF SUPER EYEPATCH WOLF! LET'S GO! <clears throat> of course I'm only... half joking. While reflecting back on the things that brought you joy over a certain period of time certainly existed long before Leslie Bestington ever graced the world with his presence, I would also be lying if I said that John's Favorite Things series weren't a direct inspiration to my wanting to make this video. With so much of media discussion these days feeling like we spend more time talking about the things we didn't like than the things we did, I just love the idea of devoting time to singling out the things that brought us joy over a period of time. And since I kickstarted this channel back to life only recently, I figured why not paint with as wide a brush as possible this time and talk about 10 things that brought me joy from all throughout 2023. Now, just about anything from movies to games to comics to YouTube videos and beyond can be part of these lists. The only real qualifier is that they're things I thought were cool and wanted to talk about that I hadn't already covered in a video. Of course, that doesn't mean anything being talked about in this video is necessarily disqualified from getting the coverage treatment in a video later on down the line. And as one final point of order, the only thing that we still need to address is that while this is a list, it is not actually a ranked one. Well, with the exception of the top two entries, the rest of this list is basically entirely malleable and slots were chosen at random with a format mentioned top two being tied for first. Uh, now, with all that said, let's go ahead and jump in with number 10. Doctor Strange is one of my favorite comic book characters of all time, and his marriage to Clea, the Sorcerer Supreme of the Dark Dimension, is easily one of my favorite aspects of his stories. And that is why this year's run of Doctor Strange, which carries on from 22's Strange, another absolutely fantastic series, has been such a joy to keep up with from month to month. Picking up in the wake of the good Doctor's death and resurrection, the comic follows Stephen and Clea as they investigate occult disturbances, engage in interdimensional diplomacy, and even learn that war crimes are bad. And, as if that wasn't interesting enough, we also have an incredible B-plot that shows Wong taking part of S.H.I.E.L.D.'s occult counterpart, Wand. Between the engaging narrative and absolutely gorgeous Alex Ross covers, just about every issue of this run has been an example of top-class comic craft, and I make no exaggeration when I say that issue 3 in particular might be my single favorite issue of any comic ever. If you want to know why, you'll just have to read and find out. Which you should, because 2023's Doctor Strange run might be the best Doctor Strange comics have been in a very long time. And that's with art that looks like this. <laughs> when I saw the first trailer for My Adventures with Superman, I was... concerned. I am a card-carrying fan of the Big Blue Boy Scout, uh, by the way, read the Dawn of DC Superman line, it's a really good companion piece to the show, and seeing what felt like a Zoomerfied take on the world of Superman felt like a strange directorial choice when John Kent was right there for the adaptation. Uh, but frankly, I've never been so happy to be proven wrong. My Adventures with Superman not only perfectly understands the appeal of Clark Kent as a character, as well as his supporting cast, it's also just a downright gorgeous show to watch. And no, I am not just talking about Lois and Vicky, though I am certainly talking about Lois and Vicky. Uh, the anime-inspired visuals are a treat for the eyes, and they are perfectly complemented by writing that just gets what makes stories like these work. My Adventures with Superman updates all the classic story beats and puts them in a snappy new format that really shows off exactly why this franchise has endured as long as it has. With fresh takes on classic characters like Parasite, Jimmy Olsen, and even a yassified Mr. Mix's Pitalik. Seriously, why is he a martyrable plushie? I love it so much! If you've never cared for Superman, I implore you to just watch the first episode, and I would be surprised if you don't come around. Chaosium's Call of Cthulhu is probably my favorite tabletop role-playing game. A simple, horror-themed game that is at its best when it's being used to tell one-shot narratives that usually end with the players dead or completely insane, it's an avenue for incredibly fun and interesting collaborative storytelling. And I'm not the only one that feels this way, as it's actually one of the most popular RPGs in... Japan? Yes, as it turns out, Japan loves Call of Cthulhu, and if you want to know more about the how and why, I highly recommend the video essay, Japan's Favorite Horror Game That You've Never Heard Of, by YouTuber Odo. This criminally underwatched video is an intensive labor of love that deep dives into the Japanese obsession with Chaosium's classic horror game, from the what's and why's to the Nico Nico Doga videos and Shoggoth Maids. The fact that Odo dropped two extremely high-quality videos before seemingly dropping off the face of the earth and having less 
and 100 subscribers is nothing short of a tragedy. And after you watch both of these videos, this is not a request, you will understand exactly why. I have a confession to make. I love VTubers. I am a straight man in his 30s who is a fan of anime and video games. Of course I love VTubers. And like so many others, my proper introduction to this world of internet anime girls was the absolute monolith that is Hololive. A collaborative entity made of a teeming mass of streamers wearing the skin of adorable anime characters, Hololive is practically a religion to many on the internet. And unlike most religions, it has a number of awesome fan-made video games. And the one that made it onto this list is Holocure, or the thing I have gotten the most use out of my Steam Deck from. As featured in my now world-famous Goosebumps video as the thing that my lazy ass used for background footage, Holocure is an incredible take on the Vampire Survivors formula that completely supplants the original in just about every imaginable way. The gameplay is fluid, fast, and addictive, and the Steam release added in a whole host of secondary and tertiary game loops that just add even more to the experience. From fishing, to gardening, to indentured servitude, there's always something to do. And it's free! There's literally no excuse not to check it out, it is free. Even if you don't like like VTubers, this game stands proudly on its own merits. Give it a go. Oh boy, here we go. Okay, yes. I like DC movies. And specifically, I love Shazam. Ever since my first time playing Injustice on the 360, I have loved the character of Shazam, or Captain <laughs> and all he stands for. A perfectly normal kid with a big heart who calls upon the powers of the gods of old to henshin into a lightning-tossing giga-chad, Captain <laughs> stories are just so much fun to experience in any form. And the other aspect of that appeal is the Shazam family. Billy's foster siblings that he shares his power with as part of their familial bond is just such feel-good storytelling that I nearly stood up and cheered when we got to see them come together at the end of the first movie. And this year's sequel, Shazam 2 Fury of the Gods, made good on that promise that the finale of the first film made. The hijinks of kids who have near unlimited power who have to once again use their bond to protect the world from threats straight out of the pages of textbooks on world mythology? If I had to describe these films in one word, it would be fun. Pure, lightning throwing, unicorn riding fun. And damn it, that is good enough for me. Feliz hasta la muerte, siga así hasta que acabe. Do, uh, do people like Dr. Stone? It feels like every time I peek into the anime fandom, we've all changed what we're allowed to like in the last five minutes. Well, either way, I fucking love Dr. Stone. This show is like the Minecraft anime, featuring a main character who's basically the guy we all felt like the first time we learned how to mix baking soda with vinegar to get awesome results, trying to rebuild society after all of mankind gets petrified for over 3,000 years. From its humble origins of making ramen in season one to forever ruin the taste buds of future cavemen, to building a long-range cell phone from twigs and rocks, it is always a joy to watch the process of anime gym Neutron figuring out how to recreate modern day technology in a primitive world. And this year's New World arc was a series of increasingly entertaining shark jumps that ends with a declaration of war on the moon. Though it manages to beggar belief just as often as it credibly explains how they manage to brain blast from point A to B, the real standout is the fun character writing. Every character has a larger than life personality and it is a riot watching them all bounce off of each other. If I had to explain in one sentence how much I love the writing of this show, I'll say this. Ryusui brought capitalism to a world world with no concept of currency. I should hate him. He is my favorite character in the show. <laughs> this is probably going to be the shortest entry on the list. When Oshi no Ko was first announced as getting an anime adaptation, I was entranced by the colorful poster and went into the comment section of the post I saw it on and was immediately met by a comment saying that it was really fucking good and that you should go in blind if at all possible. I then closed the thread and patiently waited for the anime's first episode to drop, and having watched the entirety of the first season, I will tell you two things. One, Oshino Ko is really fucking good. Two, go in blind if at all possible. I will not tell you any more than this. When this video is over, go watch the first episode of Oshino Ko. Do not look up what it's about, do not read the description of the show or of the episode, just watch it. Trust me. Feliz hasta la muerte, 
As a millennial horror fan who grew up on the internet, I was around from the earliest usage of the word creepypasta. I loved stories like Smile.jpg and Dead Bart back then, just as much as I loved the analog horror of the backrooms in the Mandela catalog now. And that's why Redline's A Comprehensive History of Internet Horror was like taking a guided tour down memory lane. Starting as far back as the pre-90s and going all the way to the digital horror of today, this video shows exactly how far the homegrown horrors of the internet have come over the decades, and Redline's delivery is the perfect cherry on top. The script and editing alone made it required viewing for anyone who's interested in internet history or horror as a genre, but it's moments like the dramatic reading of the creator of Sonic.exe's Meltdown that make this one a true instant classic. Take it away, Redline. I deeply regret to inform you all that I received some bad news. The admins of the Creepypasta wiki have finally decided to delete Sonic.exe off of the wiki on the grounds that it was badly written and had too many cliches and was a bad example of what should be a creepypasta. Bull freaking horseshit. Feliz hasta la muerte, siga así hasta que acabe. As I said at the beginning of this video, the top two spots on this list are tied. It is because, as a fan of tokusatsu, I genuinely could not decide if Shin Kamen Rider or Godzilla Minus One was a better tribute to the shows and movies that I love and hold close to my heart. With scripts that treat the subject matter with complete respect, and storylines that are full of emotional gravity, to visuals that will stick with me for the rest of my life. Both of these movies have made 2023 a banner year for fans of tokusatsu. From the sheer destructive power of Godzilla simply walking around Japan, and the human drama of some of the best written characters in any Godzilla movie ever made, to the pulse-pounding action sequences and quiet contemplative moments of Shin Kamen Rider, both of these films show the absolute power that these stories have when they're at the top of their game. I love Kamen Rider. And I love Godzilla. And it's because, for as ridiculous as they can be at times, they can also cut right to the core of what makes us human in a way that only the best kinds of stories can. And that's why Shin Kamen Rider and Godzilla Minus One were my two favorite things in 2023. If there's one thing I've learned in the past few years, it's that it can often be hard, in the breakneck pace of the adult world, to stop and remember what it is that has brought us joy. And making this video has been a therapeutic exercise in counting my blessings. As we move from 2023 into 2024, I can already think of any number of things on the horizon that I'm excited for, and I'm sure would make it into a theoretical 2024 update of this video. But for now, I'm going to end it here. But before I go, I want you to do me a favor. Leave me a comment telling me what your favorite things from 2023 were. It can be a full 10 or even just one. Whatever they are, I want you to share the things that make you happy. And while you're at it, remember that this has been a powerfully pointless video, but I hope you enjoyed it anyways. So this turned out shorter than I was expecting. I actually was trying to be somewhat wary of how long the video turned out, if only for the fact that editing out the Transformers video uh, took a lot longer than I was expecting to, and a lot of that was uh, mostly audio editing, trying to cut down on stuff like mouth sounds and breathing. Uh, but yeah. I could probably easily go on to explain why I love these things so much, and part of me says I really should, uh, but I think I'm happy just leaving this where it is for now, and when I eventually maybe make another Favorite Things of X Period of Time video, we might go a little further in depth. Uh, this was also my first time since coming back where I wrote out a full script for a video, and I would say 99% of this was just taken directly off the script with a little bit of ad-libbing. Uh, it uh, might be something that I try and come back to every now and again, because this time it didn't take too long to write, but who knows what future ones might turn out like. Either way, uh, I should hopefully have this video out before Christmas, so in that case, 
I hope everybody watching this has a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Signing out. Oh, 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 uh, one last thing before I go. Big thank you to Tricker for letting me use his incredible salsa cover of Kicks Kickback for this video. I absolutely love this track. I've been obsessed with it since the first time I heard it, and I thought it would be fun to just make it the transition song. So, uh, okay, 